Lagi lagi lagi. This is for you, Wira. Happy anniversary. Here on the island, the local transport. Um, <laughs> these veggie patties smell amazing. Oh my god, they're so good! Okay, okay. see ya! special soup especially with your cleansing actually um this this is going to be in my third cookbook shh don't tell anyone what i love about this is it highlights the different mushrooms that are out there and it highlights the ones that are kind of in trend at the moment like reishi and chaga and lion's mane all that and i will be using lion's mane and reishi and in the powder form and for me, it's like, what brand do you use? Well, I just love organic or biodynamic brands, so that's my pathway. You can use whatever you like, but you want it as pure as possible. In other words, there's not additives in there, there's not like maize air flour or any kind of um, corn flour in there to bulk it up. Just look for the purest as possible. That's with those powders. The second thing is with this soup is we're gonna use mushrooms that we know of, that are worth celebrating. Cause sometimes we, we seem to flick to a food trend and we forget about nature's garden and what's around us, especially here in Indonesia and in Australia. When I go to New Zealand, there's some amazing farmers growing some incredibly, you know, delicious and unusual mushrooms that are in our supermarkets. So I prefer to kind of highlight those than I do the reishi, the chaga and the lion's mane, even though I'm using the lion's mane and the reishi, right? In the powder form. I just want to say those shiitake mushrooms, man, they are just beautiful. And the amazingness of portobello's or button mushrooms is just stunning. And you know, king browns, and then you've got um, evoke, evoke, is that how you even say it? And shimishi, I don't even know how to say it. Shimishi? Shimiji. Shimiji. <laughs> They're just so cute. Let, let me show you what I've got in my pan here. And you don't have to follow um, these particular fresh mushrooms, okay? This is what I found in the supermarket. And I thought, wow, I'm gonna use these. But as long as you're using some sort of king brown, um, some, you know, lion's mane powder and some reishi powder, then you're gonna have some button mushrooms and portobellos that we all find in the supermarket. But look what I found today. The shimishi, I don't even know how to say that. I mean, how cool is that? And then I've got some evoki mushrooms, which I find very potent and very flavorsome. I'm salivating and thinking about these. These are stunning and they're everywhere. I've used to use half a container of each one. I've got some amazing fresh shiitake mushrooms some king browns and these are quite small i have seen them in the supermarket this big if they're like this big use one or maybe two but these are quite little you know they're the size of that really and then i've got some button ones which could be um portobello you know or even oyster mushrooms so making this soup i want you to feel super relaxed and super observant of what's in your supermarket. Not to really run out there to a health food store to find the powder of reishi and lion's mane. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop everything up. I'm using garlic, I'm using a leek, and I'm using half a leek, which I sliced down the middle, and I'll use the other half for something later. I'm also gonna use garlic powder, and there's a reason why I'm doing that. I'm using fresh garlic and garlic powder because the two energies have, have this abundance of flavor that comes through. The garlic powder is quite concentrated because it's dried and it's just yummy. And fresh garlic has a little bit of a bite to it. So using those fresh energies is really cool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice this up right to the green parts, everybody. This is the chlorophyll. This is where that onion smell is as well. We're gonna slice it all up, make sure you wash it in between all the bits. Now we really don't 
don't want anything to brown here as this is cooking. You know, the leek and the garlic just need to be like simmering and is it wallowing? I don't know what the word is, but we need the natural sugars of these beautiful, amazing moments to come out of this leek and this garlic. And as this breaks down, you'll see the difference. And that's when I'm gonna add in my mushroom powders and the rest of my beautiful fresh mushrooms, which we're gonna chop up roughly. some garlic powder and some coriander. And do you know what coriander powder does? My friend Marte taught me this. It makes things meaty, seriously, like brothy. It's so bizarre. It just gives a lot of depth to it. This is when we add in our garlic powder and now our coriander powder and then our reishi mushroom powder and our lion's mane. Give this a really good mix. Those powders are in there. Oh my God, it smells amazing. And now this is when you add the mushrooms. These mushrooms are gonna create quite a lot of moisture because they're a fungi, right? Fungis hold quite a lot of moisture and we want all that moisture to come out and we want this to cook down before we add our stock and our coconut milk. This is the time where you get to salt and pepper. Give this a really good stir. Your heat's on around about medium heat, all right? Don't have it too high. And what we want these mushrooms to do is release their natural um, liquid and all the different mushrooms create a really beautiful flavor. So I'm just gonna stand by here and I'm just gonna watch things kind of mellow. All right, you can see how it's really mellowed out now. And all that liquid has just made it super, super creamy and super lush. This is the time we add in our coconut milk. Give that a nice stir. Add in your stock and then all water and then leave the lid on, on a gentle simmer for about 20 minutes. Now low simmer, like I said, really important, about 20 minutes. So our soup has been 20 minutes on that simmer with the lid on. I've stirred it a couple of times and tasted it. I couldn't help myself. Um, and then it's rested for 20 minutes. Vital, everybody. The reason being is that kind of like when you cook animals, steaks, cows, pigs, lambs, whatever, you let it rest. Our chefs let things rest. Um, and that what happens is everything just relaxes right and flavor just kind of goes through and residual heat just does its thing it's the same with vegetables we have to honor that and let them rest and give them an opportunity to mellow into each other to just kind of like go oh yeah this is great all right we're going to blend it and then eat it be mindful when you're doing this this is why the resting process is double important because the bloody thing's hot right so just be mindful as you're doing this because um, it can get super hot. I'm using a Vitamix, which I love. I know my girlfriend Dana's gonna come over later and she's gonna say to me, oh, I want it all chunky. Do what you will. And my other girlfriend will go, I want it really super smooth and creamy. I want more cream. Do what you will. For me, I'm gonna blend until I feel like stopping. <laughs> so it's really up to you. When it comes to hot food in a blender, and I've said this a thousand million times in my videos, just be careful because if you put something on there, it'll just explode because of the temperature. So just be mindful. I always get my tamper and I always kind of just sit it like this so the airflow can go in and I start off low and then build my way up to a really high speed. You know why I do this? All chefs do it. It makes a bit of noise. It's to get the air bubbles out. Okay, let's pour. 
Yum. It is delicious. It's really good. It is thick. And I'm okay with that. But oh my God, it smells amazing. Oh yeah, that is exceptional. I'll let you know when my third book comes out. Mm. See ya.